Critical Appraisal of a Pharmacoeconomic Study, Cost-Effectiveness Analysis Article by Group 17. With An Ho, Nigri Rosemary Alari, Jihan Park, Wendy Park, and Shelby Saw. The article we will be critically appraising in this presentation is titled, Cost-Effectiveness of a PCSK9 Inhibitor Therapy in Patients with Heterozygous Familial Hypercholesterolemia or Atherosclerotic Cardiovascular Disease. The title appropriately mentions the type of study being conducted as well as the disease and population of interest. The title is unbiased and appropriate for scientific-based research as it is not suggesting results in favor of either therapy. However, the title is not all-inclusive. It does not specify the country or the setting where the research is being done. It also does not explicitly state specific comparators that were being considered. The study looked at statin monotherapy versus statin plus either exitimibe or PCSK9 inhibitor therapy. The pharmacoeconomic question being addressed in this article is, what are the cost effectiveness and potential effect on healthcare spending of pro-protein convertase subtilisin kexin type 9 PCSK9 inhibitor treatment in heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. The researchers also provided a clear objective, which was to estimate the cost effectiveness of PCSK9 inhibitors and their potential effect on U.S. healthcare spending. Let's review the components of a pharmacoeconomic question and review our article. First, a well-defined objective is essential to ensure the research is focused throughout. Our study did provide this as well as a clear pharmacoeconomic question. The type of study must also be stated to allow readers to interpret the results accordingly. In this case, the type of study is a cost-effectiveness analysis. The perspective is also significant as it dictates whose costs are being considered. Our study's perspective was that of the healthcare system. The disease state at hand as well as the interventions were also stated accordingly. The intervention being considered in this study was combination statin therapy plus a PCSK9 inhibitor. PCSK9 inhibitors were recently approved by the FDA but have yet to establish their role in therapy in the guidelines. The alternatives considered were statin monotherapy and combination statin plus azetamide therapy. As we know, statins are first-line therapy for hypercholesterolemia per the ACC AHA 2013 guidelines. They are standard therapy as they have proven efficacy and have been approved by the FDA for many years. These agents are the most common therapy options seen in the community setting and have long been used in clinical practice. Combination statin plus azetamide therapy also has proven efficacy and has been approved by the FDA. Azetamide is a common adjunct therapy for further cholesterol level reduction. As mentioned, the intervention studied was the use of a statin and a PCSK9 inhibitor combination. In this study arm, incremental treatment was evaluated with PCSK9 inhibitor combination or as monotherapy in statin intolerant patients. While the authors did not list the dosages and duration of therapy, the study can never, nevertheless be replicated because retrospective data was used. One of the alternatives slash comparators was statin monotherapy, in which use was identified by the 2005 to 2012 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Another comparator listed was the use of a statin and azetamide combination, where azetamide has also been used in combination with statins or as monotherapy in statin intolerant patients. Methods. The study was conducted from the perspective of the health system, which includes patients, hospitals, clinics, and health insurance companies. Accordingly, the overall goal of the study was to examine potential effects of this therapy on U.S. healthcare spending. Considerations included direct healthcare costs, both immediate and long term, associated with the progression of HFH and potential increased life expectancy. To summarize, the objective of the study was to assess the use of PCSK9 inhibitors and determine if their use to significantly decrease rates of myocardial infarctions, strokes, and cardiovascular deaths is worth the added cost. Next, let's discuss the relevance of the costs studied. In terms of direct medical costs, the annual cost of medications for both azetamide and PCSK9 inhibitors, as well as the cost of various cardiovascular outcomes, were recorded in U.S. dollars. Such CV outcomes include the cost of congenital heart disease care, such as acute, fatal, and non-fatal MI hospitalizations, and the related cabbage procedures, as well as post-hospitalization and subsequent health care costs. Costs for heart failure care included those related to 
Heart failure hospitalizations and costs for stroke care include spending on fatal and non-fatal stroke hospitalizations, as well as post-hospitalization and subsequent health care costs. Costs were collected from 2005 to 2012, which was an appropriate seven-year interval considering the long-term nature of these chronic disease states. Estimations and other material referenced included data from the NHANES, the California OS HPD 2008, the U.S. Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the Red Book, and the Agency of Healthcare Research and Quality. There was no mention of costs or consequences that were excluded from the article, which is appropriate given that the main objective of the study was to assess the cost of medications and CV outcomes in relation to a broader healthcare perspective. Primary outcomes included lifetime instance of major adverse CV events, such as related mortality, non-fatal MI, and stroke, as well as the incremental cost per quality adjusted life year and the total impact on U.S. healthcare spending over a five-year period. Secondary outcomes include the incremental costs per life year gained, the number of patients that need to be treated over the five-year interval to prevent one major adverse CV event, the price at which drugs become cost-effective based on a patient's willingness to pay of $100,000 per quality adjusted life year, the total effect on the U.S. healthcare budget over the five years provided all eligible patients receive PCSK9 inhibitors versus azetamide, and the net monetary benefit of incremental therapy with PCSK9 inhibitors based on a willingness to pay of $50,000 to $1 million per additional quality adjusted life year. Cardiovascular disease is one of the most common chronic conditions in the U.S. PCSK9 inhibitors help lower cholesterol levels, which reduces the risk of having a CV event. The outcomes from this study helps assess if PCSK9 inhibitors may lower the economic burden in terms of hospitalization and long-term management. The study was completed in an appropriate amount of time given the feasibility of data collection. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey by the CDC was conducted between the years of 2002 and 2012. The authors did acknowledge a limitation. There were no long-term clinical outcomes for PCSK9 inhibitors. Short-term trials were not powered. The cardiovascular disease policy model included an entire population of adults in U.S. aged 35 to 74 in 2015. The cardiovascular disease policy model is an established simulation model of coronary heart disease and stroke incidence, prevalence, mortality, and costs in U.S. adults ages 35 and older. The prevalence of CV risk factors was estimated from population-weighted NHANES from years 2005 to 2012. Utilities and costs were assigned to each clinical event and health state in annual cycles and discounted at 3% annually. No adjusting was done for the analysis. The assumptions stated by the authors are as follows. Assuming 2000 prices, utilities, and costs were discounted at 3% annually, there was a base case assumption that 10% of each population was statin intolerant. Effect parameter for statin, azetamib, and PCSK9 inhibitor were assumed identical in terms of relative risk for CV events per one mole per liter reduction in LDL-C. Patients receiving PCSK9 inhibitor therapy assumed to develop mild injection site reactions without an increase in cost or discontinuation of treatment. Annual drug costs of statins and azetamib were assumed to be equal were assumed to be equal wholesale acquisition cost. Drug costs of PCSK9 inhibitors were assumed based on mean 2015 annual cost of eliroquimab, which was 14,600, and evolucumab, which was 14,100. The sensitivity analysis conducted and discounting was used to improve precision and reliability. The cost of PCSK9 inhibitors assumed was based on 2015 prices and adequately reflect the most recent cost of the medication. Assumption for statin and azetamide prices based on the wholesale acquisition cost was appropriate given that the article had a healthcare system perspective, but the actual cost of medication for patients may be lower. The rate of set and intolerance was 10% based on national range of 3 to 20%, but, ident but identification of true intolerance was conducted through rechallenging re statins or performing single patient trials to assess set and tolerability may decrease eligibility for PCSK9 inhibitors and decrease total cost. There were equivalent effect parameters for the relative risk of, of CV events, which may overestimate or underestimate the effectiveness of intervention or alternatives. 
but it is well evidenced that all treatments considered had demonstrated efficacy in reducing LDL cholesterol. Results and discussion. This is a table adapted from Table 3 of the article titled Modeling Results, Clinical and Economic Outcomes Over the Lifetime Analytical Horizon. The values of the ICER are calculated as dollars per life year saved. This is a continuation from the last table showing the ICER as the quality of life years in monetary values. The values are shown here. This is a table adapted from Table 4 of the article titled Effect of PCSK9 Inhibitors on Total Healthcare Spending Over 5 Years. The values shown in the table are the net healthcare costs on HFH and ASCVD with azitamide and PCSK9 treatments. The results looked at the impact of the two different treatments on a number of factors. The first is the impact on lifetime major CV events, or MACE. For HFH, the addition of azitamide to statin therapy prevented less MACE compared to addition of PCSK9 inhibitors. For ASCVD, the addition of azitamide prevented less MACE versus PCSK9 inhibitors. With regards to the impact on incremental cost per quality adjusted life year, the addition of azinamide to statin therapy generated 475,100 additional quality adjusted life years at an ICER of 152,000 per quality adjusted life years versus addition of PCSK9 inhibitor, which generated 628,500 additional quality adjusted life years at an ICER of 503 thousand dollars per quality adjusted life years. With regards to the total effect on U.S. healthcare spending over five years, PCSK9 inhibitor use was estimated to decrease healthcare costs related to the cardiovascular care costs by $29 billion over five years, while increasing drug costs by $565 billion over five years. Even though PCSK9 inhibitors substantially decrease MI strokes and cardiovascular deaths and prevent SCVD, PCSK9 inhibitors are not cost-effective at 2015 prices and re would require more than two-thirds in price reduction to meet cost-effectiveness threshold. There was also an impact on clinical practice. In clinical trials that lasted 3 to 12 months, two PCSK9 inhibitors, altrocumab and evolucumab, reduced mean LDLC. These trials were not conducted for evaluation of clinical outcomes, but data from them shows that ACS-CVD risks are lowered with these PCSK9 inhibitors. Based on this data, PCSK9 inhibitors have been approved for use in patients with a family history or pre-existing ASCVD who requires additional lowering of LDLC, even when on maximum tolerated doses of statins. If this data can be carried out long term, PCSK9 inhibitors can become an important option for patients with high ASCVD risks. The following results were obtained from the supplemental text. There were implications on the one-way sensitivity analysis. The authors of the article addressed the impact that changes in drug costs and the time horizon had on the ICER of PCSK9 inhibitor treatment and azinamide treatment. The ICER was sensitive to changes in drug costs and the time horizon for both PCSK9 and azinamide treatment. The cost effectiveness is notably lower with rises in medication costs and shorter time horizon. This was perhaps reasonable as this is a chronic condition and it may require a larger time horizon to observe clinically relevant outcomes. The probabilistic sensitivity analysis was done to address the uncertainty in outcomes with PCSK9 inhibitors with the limited clinical trial data. Stand therapy without adjunctive therapy was considered the most cost-effective option with a willingness-to-pay threshold. As the willingness-to-pay threshold rises, azinamide followed by PCSK9 inhibitors are the dominant options. This demonstrates that the results of the studies do not change following sensitivity analyses. One limitation was that there are no long-term data on clinical outcomes for PCSK9 inhibitors. There were short-term trials of 3 to 10 months, but if in the end clinical trials are currently ongoing that result that PCSK9 inhibitors do not have an improvement on LDLC levels, then the model that the authors presented will be an overestimation of the cost-effectiveness. Another limitation was the effect of PCSK9 inhibitors on total healthcare spending in the community setting because it depends on uptake and adherence levels of the patients. This may vary based on the patient's age, educational level, comorbidities, and other cost-sharing factors. Long-term clinical effect of non-adherence to PCSK9 inhibitors is currently unknown, but patients who stop taking the drug do not accumulate either neither costs nor benefits and do not affect the cost-effectiveness of the drug. 
The next limitation is the inclusion of other time periods. LELC lowering treatments in patients with a family history of ASCVD may have started at childhood or at young adulthood period to prevent premature CHD. This model may not have included the entire clinical or economic burden of this specific group. However, there is no data currently about the efficacy or safety of PCSK9 inhibitors in children and limited in young adults. PCSK9 inhibitors currently only approved for adults by the FDA. Patients with a family history may have a doubled ACS BD risks related to LDLC levels, which improve the incremental cost effectiveness ratio and making it still above the threshold in the sensitivity analysis. Conclusion to review, the objective of the study was to evaluate the cost effectiveness of PCSK9 inhibitors and determine their possible impact on U.S. healthcare spending. The conclusion provides an appropriate statement addressing their research question. The authors declare that the use of PCSK9 inhibitors in the study per, uh, patient population did not satisfy the thresholds necessary to be considered cost effective. They restated that PCSK9 inhibitors use will cause an extensive rise to the U.S. healthcare system cost. They also offer a suggestive reduction in the cost of PCSK9 inhibitors that would be needed to undertake to meet the threshold. The conclusion did not over extrapolate the information and stay within the boundaries of the initial research question and may be deemed overall appropriate. Here are our references and thank you for listening.